been into pigeons since we were born, as in our family. As I grew up from a little lad, fascination just took over. And uh, yeah, I always wanted to keep pigeons, but I never flew on, our, on my own. It's not until the age of 24 and I thought, you know what, I actually want to do this. Before then, I used to go every weekend or some weekends to my uncle's house and watch his birds drop in. Whereas that, he was growing into the house and all, and he had the same thing, but he used to be their partner, help out on daily chores. So in 2005, I actually started up on my own, me and my other cousin. And then Atty come in, jump ship, left the mighty Khan brothers. And um, that's when we decided to change the name to Malik and Khan. I actually started up with Luella pigeons. We went there in 2005. It was June, July time. My uncle said to me, because I wanted young uns, he goes, I can't give you no young uns now. He should have asked me before. So he goes, let's go to Luella, where you can just pick them up off the shelf. We went there and bought kits of six for 100 pounds. So I bought four or five of them. Our next pigeons after that come from my uncles. We're basically getting them from their race team. He bred us uh, youngsters from their race team. He wouldn't and we... give them to us out of the stock. Their stock at the time. They wouldn't give it to us. They said, um, yeah. They're too good for you. <laughs> <laughs> we had children from their stock pigeons, and then uh, that's when I really thought, you know what, I want to be good at this, like, real good at this. So I took my uncle's advice. He said, listen, if you want better pigeons, we have to go and see some better lofts. So the race birds I kept at my house, the stock birds I kept here at Atty's house, and we just shared a workload, basically. We've now won. Um... Two, two BICCs, we've won a um, uh, National Flying Club this year as well, so there's three nationals that we've won. We've had many other positions as well yeah. in the nationals. Flying just a small team of pigeons, 12 cocks and 12 hens on a Woodward system and uh, 45 youngsters from Imran's place. We enjoy national racing more, yes. You could say, I wouldn't say specialised because... You've still got a lot more work to do. Yeah. We enjoy national racing. We use the first free fed racing for preparing the pigeons for the national racing. We don't tend to take a lot of account what goes into fed racing, but they must perform in the top half of the result. Got to be in the top six. If they're, if they're not thereabouts, then we don't really tend to move them on. It gives us a good early, early indication as well. Of what? The first three races of where the birds are at. If they are knocking on the door in the fed racing, we know the birds are well. Now, obviously, when it comes to the national racing, we know um, when sending two there, we have that little bit of confidence that they're, 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 they're healthy, they're, they're well. The main backbone of our shed is uh, Tipsy, who is a direct son of Marika Vink's Tips Pigeon. He's bred third, fifth, seventh, and 13th Open National. A few fed winners along the way and all, so he's the main backbone of our loft. We have um, Aishiro as well. Um, he's bred um, first, tenth, and uh, second national. He comes from the line of August Janssen and the Olympiada lines. Another good breeder of ours is Ace Cannon, who's bred us six first fed winners. Also, he's a grandfather to many first fed winners. So we pair them up on the uh, first week of December, the stock pigeons. Uh, there's 12 pairs um, here at the moment. What we tend to do is we, we move the, um, the first round from, from the stock to um, a feeder section, and then we move the second round underneath um, the water of cocks, and then the third round they'll bring up themselves. In the third round, we'll just take selected selected pairs. pairs. So yeah. mainly off the three or four top breeders that we got. We vaccinate for paramyxo, but on, in a general, no, we don't treat stock birds. They get lots of supplements though, the stock pigeons, just to keep them in good health and good nick as they're breeding. This is Ruby. Ruby was. Um, First Alan Con, 4,753 birds in the BICC National. Unfortunately, Ruby had to retire. Um, Ruby had two bad injuries underneath her, and um, we just called it a day and said, look, we're going to lose her, so we might as well just put her into stock. She is now a grandmother to um, the second National, uh, NFC uh, 2019. So when the last young bird race is done, we generally split the birds, cocks in their section. Hens and the stock hens are all going to one section. Basically, you feed them 75% barley, 25% like an all-round mix, or if we got food left over from the racing, that we use that, and they're kept on that until December, really. So we initially pair the woodward cocks up to woodward hens that stay at home, don't go out. 
um, they bring up a youngster with them. But when the youngster's 14 days old, we take the hens away and let the cocks finish off the young un. We repair the cocks this time to different hens, which are now our race hens. So then they're allowed to sit eggs with them for five to 10 days. One cock will be paired to two hens. The first hen, they'll bring up a young un with. The second lot of hens, they'll sit five to 10 day old eggs with. We get the birds fit from January onwards. There's like a build up where we let them out once, then twice, then three times a week until they are properly flying. So we know then they're out in their motion. They'll fly up to three hours sometimes. Some years I've had them doing three, three and a half hours, no problem. Especially the hens, they'll just fly all day. When we pair up in March, the road training comes in then. So after the second day, we uh, start the road training. The first toss is at 22 mile, and we'll keep them there for about three tosses, and then we'll move them to 38 miles, where we give them like two, maximum three tosses there, then no more road work can be taken on. Once the season starts, we don't road train them. The system that we fly, we call it the ACE system. Two hens are paired to one cock. But the beauty about our system is if people haven't got time to let pigeons out or haven't got general time due to work commitments or yeah. race both sexes, we've come up with a system where you can leave the hens locked up all week. They don't go out, they just locked up. When I say locked up, I don't mean locked up in a box, but I have known someone to do that, where they have locked them up in little hen boxes and still come out and perform with and hens. Performed with hens. Yeah. It's one of our good friends. But we tend to have them on V perches, balls on the floor. Once the hens are used to something, that's it, they're settled, they'll go paired to each other. So we thought this year, let's, let's change it. So what we done was, we was getting balls, then we was getting like helium balloons, yeah? We put them in there, and then we got the beach balls. Yeah. So we were switching it around, so making them think constantly to stop them pairing but again, up. again, because we've locked them up all week, they do tend to look at each other. It does happen. If you see two hens looking at each other, we believe lesbian hens ain't no good. We've tried it before. You try to turn a blind eye, but it never works. You've got to eliminate one. So our hens are locked in all week. Come Friday, one of us will go eight mile down the road, say basketing day, say half an hour, an hour before basketing. We'll go down the road release the hens. The hens will go and rush into the cock section. We'll show the cocks and the hens together and then we'll basket both sexes and off they go. We fly the first three fed races and when the hens do come back uh, from them races, they're left with the cock. And what we tend to do is on the shorter races, we'll leave them in like two, three hours. But then when it comes to national racing, we tend to leave them in for the rest of the day. And then what we do, we go down to the club normally, don't we? Yeah. And then when we come back, then we park. That's only because it takes longer for them to come back. Come back. It's the only motivation we really use. The old birds season consists of um, first three Fred races. Then from the first three Red Fred races, we just national race. So, so we they all expected... go on the bounce, six, seven channel races on the trot. Weather permitting though, um, we look at the wind. Uh, we, don't, we don't just throw away the pigeons. In an if, east wind. If it's an east wind, we, we won't go. We won't go, no. Because um, it takes longer for them to recover, recover for the yeah. week after. Our last channel race tends to be uh, Saints, NFC. On a good season, we can normally make it there with, what, 10, 11 pigeons? Yeah. Our Blue Ribbon race is the um, Saints, NFC race, where we look at that race of our golden race to win. 400 miles is a good distance for our pigeons. We believe that they could do that very well but it's just a matter of how many we can get to that race. We normally end up with around about 10 pigeons going into that race. So that's if everything's gone to plan. Everything's gone to plan, yeah. that's correct, yeah. But we have, we have sent there one year, we sent seven cocks, and we had three pigeons in the top, top 10 of it. Oh dear. And they performed excellently. At the end of the season, we normally end up, after the Saints race, about five, six pigeons. The last three years, um, Atty's been using Syndicate Loft's Vita Pro Combo to uh, help stock birds along. Because we're rearing and pumping, and we never used to give them anything. We decided to a, f a few years ago, and we found it helped quite a lot. With the race birds, we used a combination of Belgica Dewitt products and Tolleson. 
So for the race birds, we treat them for paramixo, and then we put them on a 10 day course of Parastop from Belgica de Wit. And they also do a very good product called Paraboost um, for Paratyphus. So we, we've tried that for the last three years and uh, yeah, it's, 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 been, it's been a good product. We haven't had no problems as such. We do send off droppings to get the birds tested, um, only when we feel that something's not right. Um, where they've gone over the process of canker, where we canker them, we, 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 we do a process of respiratory, but just to keep, the, keep it down. We don't really use a program as such. Yeah. Um, the pigeons generally tend to tell you once they start laying off a bit. Yeah, you can see the fly around the house ain't right, dry feathering, the pigeons ain't up to, up to scratch. You, you can normally tell by looking at them, something's amiss here. Now we're in the uh, Woodward cock section. The size of the actual loft inside the cock section is two and a half foot, maybe three foot by seven foot long. So they haven't got a lot of space in here. On top of that, we have a trapping sort of aviary section, which is to the front of the loft. They come in through here, through the traps, and we release them through the bay down there. But everything happens in this area here, even down to when the hens are released from their own section, as you'll see in a minute. They come in through here and they're all trapped here, fed here, especially the hens. To let them out, we open the flaps and then they exit through the trap at the bottom. We feed individually in the boxes. Um, they get a bowl inside their box. We feed twice a day, morning and evening, as much as they can eat, but we remove the food once they've eaten. Each individual box have got their own grip pot. What we attach is on the side of the box. They get fresh grit every day, a teaspoon, every single morning. And that lasts them throughout the day. Then in the evening, we remove it and fresh goes in after. When hens are in this section, these motivational perches are released. And they're opposite each box. We associate these perches with Friday motivation. So sometimes we don't want to show the hens, what we can do is just release the perches and the cocks know straight away what's going on. So you could just send them just by showing them the perch. What we do on a Friday is take the hens to an eight mile toss, come back and as they come in, the cocks and the bowls are waiting for them. So on a Friday, we show cocks the hens. We can either show the Woodward hen or we can show the race hen depending on weather, conditions, race point, what organization we're flying in, whether it's a national club or fed. When they return from a race, there will always be a hen waiting. We find with the cocks need a hen when they get back. But a hen is just happy seeing her box and her home. If a cock returns from a race and the hen's not there, we find that they sulk a lot more and it's hard to get them fly at a very high level to, um, race for you basically so the hen must be at home on the floor we use natural floor granules it's like a cat litter based anti-coccidiosis floor granule it's, it's perfect for for what we want the keeps the loft blown dry um, the pigeons love it and uh, they always have clean feet over it the ceiling is a little unusual it's all about getting light into the loft the the, the, the cocks love it I mean, it does get hot in here. We've had it go over 100 degrees in here on a, on a hot day, but we don't find a problem with the cocks. Um, the more hotter it gets, the better condition they come in. So this is our hen section. It's six foot wide by four foot long. It holds 12 hens. As you can see, we put 12 V perches on. We put these boards in between so they can't see the next hen along. We feed them individually in the pots. We've tried many systems with these hens and we pull our hair out most years. But since 2014, we come across a system where we don't need to let them out. So during the winter months, when we're prepping them up, getting them fit, we'll let them out and they'll fly two hours, three hours, no problem. 
When we pair them up in March to the cocks, when they're sitting, that's when we'll train them. About five, six tosses, no more than 38 mile. Once that happens, it's locked down. So every day they'll be sitting in there, they'll be fed as much as they want once a day. Um, and on a Friday, what we would do is we would take them to a, a short eight mile toss about an hour before basketing, half an hour before basketing, we'll take them, release them, come back. They would, that's the time they would see their cocks. They would go into their section where the cocks are and obviously see the cocks and then we'll send them racing. We race our young birds on the darkness system. We put them on the end of March, yeah. And take yeah, them off on the longest off. day, 21st yeah. of June. So around about the June, June 21st. So the young birds stay on their super breeding until um, we, feel, we feel that they're ready for exercise and uh, going out more regularly. Uh, once they start doing that, we put them on our race mix. What so the up, old birds up until been about on. May, they'll be on breeding. Yeah. And then after May, we'll uh, slowly start introducing the race mix and then we'd want them flying around the house. This is towards the end of May. A medication plan for the young birds, not really, no. Again, in May time, before we change the corn to the race mix, we will give them a course of Parastop and Paraboost and treat for canker, really, and uh, that's it. There is young bird sickness out there. There's different forms of it, different types of it, but generally speaking, Belgica Dewitz, Cobol and Beljamco. Beljamco, yeah. Normally kills it. Young bird training, we tend to start four to five weeks before the race, first race, first fed race that is. From there, we like we, we go once a day. Um, some days when we feel that we need to, we'll go twice. Yeah, when we get to the uh, 50 mile mark. When we get mark. to the 50 mile mark. They so start our, off. Our first toss is 22, 22 mile. miles. Yeah, yeah. Our first toss is 22 mile. We turn them up from the very off. Yeah, broken um, down straight away. We want them to think straight away. It doesn't take long. Out he goes on the first toss. <laughs> <laughs> he takes them, gives them 15 minutes apart, basket at a time, lets them go, just to make sure that they don't hit each other or whatever, so they come home separately. Normally it tends to take about an hour, hour and a half on their first toss, and then we'll wait till they're coming out there comfortably. The minute they're doing it in a mile a minute, we'll move them straight to 38 mile. Once they're doing it comfortable out of there, we'll take them straight to 50 mile. And once they're doing it comfortable out of there, we will break them down, down to twos. That's when the real work starts. Yeah. We go to fives, and then we go to threes, and then we go twos. Once they go twos, we know the birds are at it. They'll be coming. Imran, I would go normally in the evening, and um, I'll let them go five minutes apart. When I know they're really, really at it, they'll go three minutes apart. When they go three minutes apart, Imran will ring me when they come in. He'll get them in their twos, three minutes apart. That's when we know the young birds are on form and they're ready to go. When the young birds start racing, we will take them short Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, weather permitting. Normally it's twice a week because it's hard to get three good days. And just basically let them go from there, fives up, just to work on their sharpness. But we'll let them out in the morning, still twice a day work. They still fly around home very well. well. It's just that this, this 20 mile in between racing, we feel that it just keeps them on their toes. Short, sharp work. We don't park the youngsters. Uh, we, we race on a natural, natural system. system. We encourage them to pair up. We, yes, we if do. We yeah. see, if we see couples pairing up, we will encourage them with a bowl, um, straw, it, nesting even materials. Even when we're going training, we, we don't mind putting cocks and hens in the same crate. That's not a problem to us. The furthest we take our young uns racing wise is the Young Bird National. This year it was uh, 100, 169, 169 mile. So when the season's finished, to get them through the malt, uh, again, 75% barley. 25% corn, if we've got race mix left over, we'll bash it all together, feed them as much as they want once a day. Regular food, regular grit, regular water change, and time. We don't let them out in the winter, no. We um, tend to give them loads of baths. They do take a bath for some reason twice a week in the winter. Try doing it at racing, it never works. So this is our young bird section, 10 by eight, with 80 boxes. We um, wean um, 45, youngsters in this section uh, on, on the darkness system. So we darken the pigeons uh, first week of March, uh, going right through to June 21st. In that period of time, they go out once or twice during the week um, to get everything up and running, 
let them get around to get their surrounding areas. We have an aviary here made by Rosemary um, where the youngsters can look out, get their surroundings. We feed the youngsters on this trough um, using these stands here. Build it up to this height so it's easy for us to feed the babies and they can eat as much as they want, yes. So they're on um, super breeding throughout their molting season. So once they start being let out and getting ready for, for racing, they will go into the racing mix. They can eat as much as they want. Yeah, we never cut back. We feel that if you do cut back, they won't perform to their level. We don't use a lighting system. Once they're off dark, they stay the way they are. So this is our young bird national winner from two weeks ago. He won the national from Catanzas, the National Flying Club, with 3,058 pigeons in the race. He's bred out a pigeon from Jan Hoymans that we just introduced, from a son of New Harry. His mother is from Franz Walls, which was a gift to us from Franz. She's bred us two national winners now and six or seven first fed winners. So this pigeon will carry on racing next year, hopefully to win us another first national. In selection in buying pigeons, we look for, the first thing we look for is the pedigree and the history of the pigeon. How many champions are in that pedigree? How many yeah. can we cram in? Line after line after line, it's got to have loads of winners, got to. We don't, we don't look at any theories within pigeons, whether it be eye sign, wingspan, balance of pigeon, we don't look at none of that. It's we, got we, the basket tells you everything how good you that know, pigeon yeah, is. Yeah. Yeah. And then all we do is buy the pigeon, breed loads of young'uns out of it, and put them in a basket and test them. Whichever one comes home first or wins, we keep the parents. They've got two years to, or three years to prove themselves. Within the three years, no matter how much we pay for the pigeon, it will be moved on. Our biggest influence um, in the sport, I'd say, um, would be our uncles, Khan brothers. They've been there, yeah. but uh, it's, they know we've taken over now. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, they've, they've helped us along the way. They have helped uh, us along the way. Supported yeah. us. The biggest challenge in pigeon racing for us has got to be trying to win a national, isn't it? Yeah. The yeah, big one, the NFC. Yeah. yeah, we've done it this year. We've, we've done it this year, thank God. Um, that, that's, that's been a, a challenge been, and a half. It's, that, that, it's, been, it's been hard work to that get. That organisation <laughs> is, we've been there, we've been so close. Uh, then you start thinking, can we win it? Can here? We, yeah. And then when it you happened. crack it, it's, um, yeah. The biggest ambition that we've got now, we've got this thing of our national winners. I know some people, they, they put it into stock. Um, our biggest thing is we want that we want, we want to carry on going, racing with that pigeon, and getting a multiple national winner. Yeah, we, we, we want the be best in, pigeon in, in pigeon. Europe. In, in there's, there's pigeons out there that have set a stall so high, pigeons like Wing Down, I know he's a distance pigeon, but if you look at his race performances, three top seven multiple performances, you've got to try and beat that. Yeah. Pigeons like Harry across the pond, Big, big performances. You've got to try and beat that. No disrespect to one-hit wonders out there. There's, there's some good one-hit wonders out there who've gone on to produce beautiful pigeons, best good pigeons. But you need that multiple performer that you can build a dynasty around. And that's what we're after. I think the RPRA need to get involved and upset a few apple carts. I think to take the, to take the sport forward. We need to race like Belgium. Yeah, and I think the RPRA needs to step in now. I do, I do believe that they need to start getting organisations together, whatever area you're, area you're in, and say, look, you guys all get together, you're going over to that race point, and, and racing against the big birdage. I think right now, I think there's a lot of... Too many clubs. Too many clubs. Of... Too many people crossing each other. I think the country should be cut down as a cross. In a quarters. Um, into quarters. And then you have your whole region going one way. I know they're going to say, oh, they're going to take over, or they're going to take over. It's not about that. You're going to get your day. We, you need, get, we, we need to the wind race is like right, a Belgium system. Yeah, I think when the wind is right, you'll get your day. People that send large numbers of pigeons don't bother us one bit. A good mate of ours, um, as you, everyone knows him, Mark Gilbert, sends 
a fair few pigeons. It never bothers me in the slightest. You get uh, a kick out of beating someone like yeah, that. I'm think... using him as an example because everyone's heard of him. But there's many others that send loads of numbers, but because they don't get in the top half of the result, no one worries about them. But because Mark's that good, and he it does... It doesn't worry us. It doesn't worry us. I, I, I believe that the quality that we're sending the 24 of our old birds, I think that quality is good enough to beat them. Yeah. And they've shown and it, and it time has, and time. It has beat them. To me, I think it's just an excuse if you want to say, oh, he sent that many. Oh, we can't beat him. You've got, you got, you got to worry about beating the whole convoy, your, not just right. one person. That's right. I think you've got to get off, get off your backside and do something do about something it. Do something about it. You've got, you got, you got, you beat, you got to beat the whole pigeons. All of them, the whole lot. Someone new coming into the sport. Make sure you have loads of money. <laughs> <laughs> Helps. Um, I would say... Pigeon is expensive now. It is now. It is, yeah. With, with corn and... And sending the birds. But it's what people make you know? of it. But though. it's what you make of it. That's right. I wouldn't go straight into going to get the loft, go go mm. get pigeons. I wouldn't do that. What I would do is um, I'll go to a local fancier and um, be his apprentice. Watch what he does, how he does things, um, what his day to day routine is, pick up things within yeah, what good. he's doing, and um, and then from there, then start up, then get your shed. Once you get your shed, then go get your pigeons. Once you get your pigeons, look after whatever you've learned, bring that into your then, sport, then and then from away, there, yeah. from there you will evolve yourself. Yeah, whether you're good at it, bad at it, or whatever. If you're going to try something, try it for the whole year. Don't chop and change. Whether it's feeding, motivational tricks, letting out, whatever it is new you're going to try, try it for the whole season before you write it off. You always hear stories of people breeding late breads who don't give them much training or racing or no racing at all. And they come out and win feds, combines, nationals, internationals, pigeons are born. So the most important part of the whole aspect is pigeon. The pigeon's got to be born a champion. What keeps us going day to day? Number one would be the knockers. Yeah, we've got a few of them. <laughs> I think... Um, they, they, they get us up in the morning. Yeah. They, they motivate us. They don't know it. Well, they we, do now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our biggest thrill in pigeon racing was last week, two weeks ago. Yeah, when we won the national. <laughs> um, Loads of tears of joy. It was amazing. Sometimes it does get like winning ain't enough. It's like um, it's like an addiction. Uh, you can't get enough of it. It almost becomes like an obsession. It takes over, and I really, really admire my wife and my family for that. Because they they do put up with a lot. Thank you.